code. That's all. It's that simple. They like wealth. That's what they're here for. They came here to build wealth. So who are they going to vote for? Some idiot who's destroying wealth? No. That's number one. And the same goes, I think, for the African-American male. They don't like uh, a white woman telling them what to do. And as a matter of fact, they'd rather have a rich white man running the country than a, uh, a female of that nature. Let's put it to you that way. I'll be very pl uh, classy about it. So I personally think that if the election were held today and it was a head-to-head -head between Trump and, and Hillary, it'd be a, who knows, 75-25, unless the, you know, the, the votes were rigged. It couldn't be 70-30. That's about it. She'd lose in a landslide. It would be Oh, they'd be shocked. Just like they're shocked that you bring in a, a million men of military age to Europe who are sexually uh, frustrated without women, and they start raping. They didn't know that would happen. Shocking. Reuters could never figure that out. 855-407282. We're talking about so many topics I can't even summarize them. But I do think I'd like to talk about drug addiction because no one's talking about it, and I don't know why. I don't know why it's not a topic. Why is no one talking about the scourge of drugs on our youth? It's killing us. It's killing our children. And no one's talking about it. Now, there are things that can be done. Old Savage has some solutions. You can start with the source of the oxycodone, the pharmaceutical companies, and prohibit the manufacture of those drugs. That's number one. I mean, cut it off at the supply. Listen, i got to tell you something. Um, in my, at my master's level in training, I was studying pharmacology with one of the great men in the history of pharmacology. He was the former research director of Dow Chemical. doesn't make me a great chemist, but I know a little bit about the subject. And the fact of the matter is that you may not be aware of it, but that heroin was a synthetic derivative that was developed to get people off morphine. Did you know that? Big Pharma at that time created a drug to treat um, a morphine addiction. It's because the West was so addicted to morphine. In all of its manifestations, it was legal. People were using it all the time, and they were becoming addicted. And they didn't know how to treat the addiction. So the chemists developed a modification of morphine. They modified the uh, uh, the acetyl mo molecules, I think a 3,6-diacetyl morphine is heroin, if I, not, if I remember it at all. In other words, they made a synthetic morphine called heroin to get people off of morphine. And as you well know, heroin is more addictive than morphine is. Then what happened later on in the mid of, mid of the last century? What did pharmaceutical industry, what did the industry develop to get people off heroin? Do you remember which drug was being given out? in clinics across America and is still given out, where heroin addicts have to go in and drink the stuff, it turned out that that was more addictive than heroin. So, you know, it's one drug after another, and you have to start with the drugs and then work your way down. You also have to start punishing the drug dealer, not the drug taker. I'll be very clear about that. It's frankly heartbreaking to see the police doing their jobs, yes, but harassing the drug user. Because to me, the drug user may be a criminal, but unless you catch him doing a criminal act, he's not a criminal. And to criminalize the use of drugs, to me, is a crime. The crime is selling the drugs. And that's where the crime needs to be punished much more severely. The dealer, the supplier, the importer, that's where the crime is. That's where I think you need to focus on, but no one's talking about it. Why is no one talking about drug addiction when it is a scourge that's killing our youth? How come the great president of the United States had nothing to say the other day about the scourge of drugs on our children. Why? Think very, very carefully. Think very, very carefully where the campaign funds come from. Think about the cozy relationship between pharmaceutical lobbyists and government spokesmouths, and then you'll have your answer. Everything is bought and paid for in the United States of America. Virtually every idea that you hear, except mine, are the result of lobbyists. Of course, this is the theme song of the entire Obama administration, ex-hippie druggies, some of them, of course, still addicted to Prozac, no doubt. I would guess, I'm guessing, though. By their behavior, many of them are on medication. The statements make no sense. The benign smiles in the midst of disasters make no sense. It's as though we're living in two different universes. One of the average person and one of the idiots who are running the country. Nevertheless, I want to talk about the topics of the day, which include drug addiction, based upon the show I saw last night. I think it was on HBO. 
about heroin addiction in the uh, Cape, uh, whatever, not Cape Girardeau, but Cape Cod, Massachusetts. And the po- I didn't have any sympathy at all for the drug addicts. You know what I felt? Let them all take a hot shot as far as I'm concerned. I'm so sick of the indulgence on these shows like Intervention, I Want to Scream. No one ever told these brats to stop it, to do anything. I, that, I feel it's just it's indulgence, the whole thing. I'm, I, don't, I don't have sympathy. I'm sorry for addicts. I don't. And that goes for alcoholics as well. Don't think I'm justifying alcoholism. I've had doctor friends who've treated every kind of patient, and they've told me that alcoholics are the hardest people in the world to treat. They're harder to treat than heroin addicts, incidentally. So don't think I'm selling alcohol or I'm going soft on alcoholism. But I have no sympathy for addicts because the rest of us have to pick up the tab for it. And if you analyze it, the, the treatment industry <laughs> is a joke unto itself. You see these uh, these addicts, heroin addicts in Cape Cod, every so often they get sent to rehab. It's a hotel. They live better than I do. They do nothing all day long except talk about themselves and take yoga and eat good food and play with each other and uh, play ping pong. What in the heck is our society about? It gets, that the weakness is going to, how could weakness cure weakness? Can anyone explain that to me? The weakness of rehab does not cure the weakness of an addiction, in my opinion. So you say, well, what are you suggesting? The opposite. A work regimen might cure them faster than a, a rehab in a nice, soft, warm bed with four meals and yoga all day long and sitting and holding hands and singing things to each other. I'm sorry, the whole thing's wrong. And by the way, who do you think owns these rehab clinics? Has anyone looked into the corporate structure that owns the big chains of rehab clinics? You'd be shocked to find out who owns them who's in the business of rehab, and then you may find that the fine line between the drugs themselves and the rehab uh, treatment centers is really not that clearly defined. You may find that there are multiple board members who sit on the boards of uh, Big Pharma and Big Treatment. So we have a problem that no one is addressing. And I believe it's a topic that is fair game for a radio talk show of this size. If I'm on in all these cities and I have millions of listeners, which we do, and this touches virtually every community in America, from New York City to the smallest town in God knows where, drug addiction is a national epidemic on every level. Tell me which candidate last discussed it. Answer, none. Not even the Democrats will discuss it. You think they care about the people and Obamacare. They're not talking about it. And that, that indicates something to me that is very troublesome. Why are the candidates ignoring the drug epidemic in the United States of America? We heard about guns the other day, but what about drugs? So that, that's a topic that we can talk about along with the scourge of immigration and the other problems of the day on the Savage Nation. If you care to join the conversation, don't try because you can't. Right now, the tent is full. The switchboard is jammed and sold out. Let's take some callers. Hey, KCMO Radio. I haven't heard from you in a while. George, KCMO, are you in Kansas City, Missouri? Yes, sir. Great I station. Think... Great station. Glad to have you. What's on your mind? I believe the drug addiction has a lot to do with you can influence people to do what they normally would not do if they are under the influence of drugs or completely not coherent. It's just like having someone wet their pants. If you ask someone to do it when they're coherent, they're going to say no. But if you wait until they're half asleep or drunk and you stick their hand in a, in a bowl of water, they're going to do it. I, I, so what, what, what are you suggesting? How do we stop the drug epidemic in America? What would you do if you were, the, if you were in charge of it? Well, you've got to, you've got to go with the, the suppliers. You can't, uh, as, as long as they're going to get supplied the drugs from, from somebody... They're going to go somewhere else. I mean, you've got to cut the snake off at the head as long as there's an opportunity. Well, to let's say this. There's an easy solution to one of the drug supplies that, that hooks a lot of kids on heroin, and that's oxycodone. Don't you think it, they should stop manufacturing it? It's a deadly drug. It's an absolutely deadly drug, and it shouldn't be manufactured at all. Well, I went through back surgery myself, and I've never been on oxycodone or oxyheroin or and, and I went through a lot of pain. I don't think... A lot of kids take oxycodone, they grind it up, and they snort it. 
The next thing they know, they're looking for the next high, and they go and buy heroin because it's cheaper. That is an absolute fact of reality. It's not an invention. And so I would say the first step should be the uh, outlawing of oxycodone. What's interesting, though, is the weasels in the Senate will go after things like soda and fat and cigarettes, but the weasels in the Senate, and I can name every one of them, so far as I know, have not held a hearing on oxycodone. Doesn't that tell you that they're in the own that they're owned by the drug industry? I would agree. All right, my friend, thanks for calling. If you care to join the conversation, eight five five four hundred seven two eight two. This is not the only topic, it's one of them. I brought up another topic which I'm not gonna just drop because I kinda teased you with it. And remember what I said in the beginning of the last hour, analyzing kids' hair may help predict the risk of mental illness. And the researchers in Australia found that the levels of cortisol in a child's hair samples can indicate the experience of lifetime trauma in children. And it may be a biomarker of lifetime uh, stress or trauma. But the important thing was not whether or not we're producing high levels of, of cortisol, whether it's children or, or, or adults, but what you can do to reduce your cortisol levels, which is the stress hormone. And I told you, I read a study in the 1970s, which uh, set off, I don't know, a real liberty bell in my head. I read in the health food literature, which was, of course, confirmed from the medical literature, that on analysis, suicide victims all have elevated cortisol levels and that certain nutrients greatly lower cortisol levels. Simple vitamin C, omega-3 fatty acids, and the B vitamins are making it very simple can lower cortisol levels. Now, what's related to this question is interesting. Just because suicide victims are found to have elevated cortisol levels, let's say a person jumped off a building and they do the blood work to see if there's drugs or what, and they find elevated cortisol levels, does that mean that the, elevated, the levels were elevated prior to the jumping, that they couldn't take the stress? Or is it that the cortisol levels were elevated during the jump? I don't know the answer to that. That's something that wasn't studied. But I do know this, that vitamin C, omega-3s, and B vitamins reduce cortisol levels. And it's not a bad thing to take anyway on a regular basis, incidentally. No, you're right. In other words, you know and I know that nobody gives up an addictive substance or an addictive lifestyle unless they want to. All the treatment in the world doesn't do a darn thing until the person says, I, I hate myself, I'm fed up with it. And yet the opposite is taught in rehab. Don't hate yourself, love yourself. I disagree. There's certain things that you should hate in yourself. Don't you agree? You have to look in the dirty mirror, and you have to realize yeah, I'm saying is what this whole touchy-feely left-wing view that we're all wonderful, we've never done any harm, even if we're the worst person on the earth, we're really not uh, a bad person, and it's not our fault. You're never going to get cured of your addiction if that's what you think. I think it stems from people wanting to help others and people that have never dealt with the problem. If you've never dealt with drug addiction, it's really hard to tell someone how to fix it, right? So you're just searching for the holy answer of... So how did you give up your addiction to pot? I gave up my addiction by realizing I should not be a slave to any substance. If pot is as great as it is, it should not enslave me to its ways, right? I shouldn't have to lean on pot for my own... How many, year, how many years were you hooked on marijuana? Um, I grew up in a, in a low-income poverty neighborhood where it was the normal, you know, it was around me all the time. I started when I was probably 15 until the age of, of 22, and I just realized, you know, it wasn't worth it anymore. I mean, everyone how, has... How, how, how old are you now? How old are you now? I'm 27, and I'm actually a nurse now, so... Already, I want to give you a tip that you may have already learned from your own experience. You've been off that drug for five years, is that correct? Yes, sir. But you were on it from 15 to 22, you were on it for seven, correct? Yeah, yes, sir. You want to hear a metric that is generally true? You have to be off that drug for as many years as you were on it until you no longer crave it. Did you know that? I, um, I believe if, if, if you try to quit without understanding why, if you're doing it for other people, I would I believe that fact. But if you do it understanding that it's more of a, a hold, holding you back and you realize if you want to move forward in life, because, I, I mean, I'm coming from a long line of losers. I hate to down my family, but they've always been trapped in that it's not my fault, it's other people's. No one's really took that self-responsibility. Right, right, right. Everyone, right. I understand the loser mentality. It's someone else's fault. It's always a reason, you know. It's never I brought this onto myself. So once you see that clear, 
you realize the steps you need to take to to wing off of this stuff, and you realize that wow. 